Good morning, everyone. I am blessed and glad to be with you today. You know, a few days ago, this wonderful hymn was rolling through my mind, and it rolled through my mind all day long. Even when I was in the midst of doing other things, it was just there. It wasn't quite an earworm, but I just kept singing it. And those of you who don't know, an earworm is one of those songs you get in your head, you just can't get, out of, get it out of your head. But no, I was listening because part of me was meditating on what this song was actually saying and why it was saying it. And so I decided I would look it up. What song is this? Well, this song was written actually by a 17-year-old and written in 1963. That song is without him. And so I got to reading the story and reading about the author and understood how could a 17-year-old write such a wonderful song? And then as I read the song and listened to it, I said, oh yeah, that is our lives today. And then I realized what happened to this 17-year-old after he had written this song. The words of the song became more impactful in his life because they suddenly took on new meaning and new hope in his life. So I want to tell us this, his story in the middle of these, this song because this song is based on this. Jesus says this in John. And he says this to each and every one of us. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And this song speaks to that whole issue in our lives. What's going on here? Well, this song written in 1963 was by Mylon Lefebvre. I'm screwing up his last name, forgive me. But as a 17-year-old, he grew up in a gospel family, and he goes uh, off to Tennessee to begin to sing this song in front of a concert, and suddenly someone's there, very famous, who hears the song and wants to record it. That very famous someone was Elvis Presley, and within a year, you know, several people, uh, major recording artists, have recorded this song. Here's the song. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. <clears throat> without him, I would be dying. Without him, I would be enslaved. Without him, I, my life would be hopeless. But thank God with Jesus, I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Don't turn him away. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. A 17-year-old writes these words while he's in the military at 17. And then suddenly his life just changes. And so he start, wants to do music, and he does. But suddenly he's embroiled in things that he didn't want to be embroiled in, and suddenly his life is changed. Because now he's doing things that make him deny God and walk away from the Father, not live there. And so he comes back through, because he runs into the Christian rock group, Acts, Acts chapter 2, and they bring him back to the Lord. And his ministry, he, he, the Lord regains and restores his life, and he begins to have a whole new ministry. And these words take on new meaning. Why? Because he experienced this, as we all do. Without him, I could do nothing. With Christ, his life was joyful, successful. Without Christ, it crashed. Without him, I would fail. He failed. All of us have to understand that in our lives. That without Christ, we fail. Listen to the next line. Because it, it's, a, it's such an illustration for us to understand what's going on. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. I have the privilege of living in San Francisco Bay Area. So on one side, I have the ocean. On the other side, 
I have the bay, and sometimes you watch ships there, they, they're guided by the rudder, they're guided by the sails, they're guided. But occasionally, when there's a strong wind, these ships just break loose and they f go all over the place. They're just drifting, going anywhere. Once a ship was, a small boat was anchored in San Francisco Bay, they couldn't find it. Strong storm had come up and it had broken loose and it had broken in the waves that carried it all the way down to Pacifica, some 20, 30 miles away from the center of the bay. That's our lives without Christ. We just wander. We're like ships without a sail. We can do nothing. We fail. Without him, I could be dying. Because inside we're dying, hoping. Is there hope? Is there life? What can feed this gnawing hunger inside of me? Without him, I'd be enslaved. We become used to the chains that bind us. The pandemic has certainly brought us new chains. It has brought us the chains of fear, the chains of isolation. It has brought us the chains of not wanting to go outside of ourselves. The, chain, the chains of being politically one way or the other as opposed to following Christ. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him. My life would be hopeless. Think in your own life those times when you search for the Father and he says, when you seek me, you will find me. Yet instead of searching for the Father realistically, we're looking deeper at our chains. We're looking deeper at the things that bind us. Like our dear friend here, we're looking for Christ in all the wrong places, in heroin and drugs and sex and all of these things that do harm to us we're enslaved because what does the enemy want to do he wants to keep us enslaved and keep us hopeless and as he keeps us enslaved and hopeless we are dying we're dying inside spiritually we're dying mentally we're dying physically but then there's the piece of hope in the song it says this <clears throat> but with Jesus, thank God, I'm saved. There's hope there. Why? Because Jesus brings us hope. Jesus brings us life as opposed to our dying. Jesus brings us freedom as opposed to our enslavement. Jesus brings us possibility against not being able to do anything. Jesus brings us success as opposed to failure. Jesus brings us direction as opposed to drifting. Here's the words again. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Without him, I would be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, life would be hopeless. But with Jesus, thank God I'm saved. That's what the Father wants to speak into our lives today, each and every day. That apart from me, you can do nothing. That is Jesus' direct word to us. Our dear friend here, Milan, learned the hard way. At 17, yay God. Two years later, his life spirals out of control. Yet, God loves us enough to say, you're my son, my daughter, come. May he pick you up. May he dust you off. Let me save you. Let me restore you. Let me renew you. Let me speak new life into you. Because you are my child. Thank God I'm saved. Here's the chorus. Jesus, do you know him today? Don't turn him away. Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I'd be. So as Jesus speaks to you today, don't turn him away. Don't turn a deaf ear. Meditate on his word to you today. That without him, 
you can do nothing. Your life would fail. Lord, we bless you and thank you for this morning. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.